All right, welcome back. Sorry about that little hitch. I'll have to play a little bit better attention to my clock. But let's hop right in. Okay, that's not bad. Now at this point we have a nice crate box. We could add in some uh, nails or whatever we want to. And end up with a pretty nice product. But I'm going to do something else, which means we're going to end up not needing these lines. So I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, Pick both of these and just delete those layers. I know you're like, what the heck, Steve? But I just wanted to see what you could do there. Now we're going to take this layer and we're just going to add some effects to it. So I'm going to double click and we'll do some drop shadow. I want it on multiply in black. My opacity, not quite 100, but pretty dark because I want this nice separation. The angle will work at 90. You can play around with moving that a little bit, but I think it darkens up this side a little too much. Or I can just enter in 90. There we go. Oops. Let me bring that back up. Fill opacity is 100. Blend mode's gray. It's all pretty much standard stuff. We don't need too much here. We just want to separate the outside of our crate and make this look inset. So we're good to go there. We can also add another one. So we can open that back up and we can do an inner glow. Now, I want something that's kind of like the color we got, but lighter. That should do all right. Opacity at 100, noise at zero normal blend mode. What we're looking for is this little bit of an outline. The reason is, I know we've talked about value and value in terms of where the lights coming from is not what this is really about. What this is really about is the thing that we're making, a box in the real world, in a warehouse. These edges always tend to take wear and wear tends to show up as being a little bit lighter. So this gives the impression that this is actually stuck out and it's seen a little wear and tear without having to hand paint it in, which you certainly can do. All right, again, we're doing pretty good here. Now I'm going to go over to my metal stone texture and I'm going to take this selection tool and I'm just going to grab a, oops, that's not what I want. I want normal. I'm just going to grab a square of this. Control C to copy it. Come back over. We're at our top layer, so Control V to put that in on top. And I will move this up. I might shrink it down a little bit. Just, just to make it a little more fitting with what we already have. I'm going to bring this up here right into this corner. If we want, we could actually kind of stick it through this corner. That'll work out fine. Control J. I'll do the same thing over here. And because it's bigger, the texture looks different because we're getting the side of it that's over here out of the picture. I'm going to do Control E to collapse that. And then Control J. And then Control T for my transform. And we'll flip this horizontally. And then I will just pull this down here. There we go. That's not too bad. Everything's looking a little bit different here and there. Now I can collapse that, control E, so that it's all on one layer over here. But I'm going to hold down control and click on this layer below it and make that selection. Now I don't want to get rid of this stuff. I want it to be there, but I do want to get rid of these corners. So I'm going to hit control shift I, which will invert my selection to the inside and then just hit delete. And we get rid of those corners. 
trying to make those silly Photoshop things disappear. Now we can do the same thing with this that we did with our wood to make it stand out a little bit more. We'll add some layer style. We'll do a drop shadow. We'll maybe take the spread down because this doesn't stick up above the wood like our wood edges stick up above, or above the inset. Pardon me. So uh, maybe a little bit of spread, a little less distance. We want this to be pretty subtle. We'll also do the inner glow. But now instead of brown, we're going to grab a kind of bluish metal color. And this will be something pretty blown out. Maybe not quite that blown out. Opacity to 100, no noise. I'm pretty happy with this. Yeah, I like that. I think that'll do just fine. And again, we get that impression of wear at the edges. Ah, uh, you know one thing I didn't do on? We don't have it here. And you know why that is? Uh, if you can guess, you get a brownie point, and it's because I didn't crop this layer before I started. So I'm going to hit Control Z. I'm going to undo that. I'm going to go to my crop tool. Hit Enter. And now we got to get rid of this. So that All of those effects were being applied out here. So I'll hit Enter again. We've got that gone. Now we can go in, do our drop shadow, which is just fine. Do our inner glow, which now shows up all the way around the way we wanted. So see, I screw up regularly too. Click OK. We're looking pretty good. Now, the only thing we might want is some bolts. Now, we could grab one of the bolts we built earlier. Or I can just paint these in, which is pretty easy to do. I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to go to this. I'm going to make sure I got a nice hard brush. I'm going to sample this kind of darker area and make it just a little bit darker still. And maybe just a hair grayer. And I'm going to make it up to about the size I want it to be. Probably something like that. That should do. Alright, that should work alright. I'm just going to go ahead, since this is such a low res texture, I'm just going to go ahead and put these in all over. A little haphazardly, I'm not trying to be exact. Something like that. Now we can click on that, which will select just all of these. Control plus to zoom in a little bit so we can see what we're doing. And I will go to my dodge tool. And yeah, let's size that down. I'm just going to paint. out. Deselect so we can see. It's not too bad. I could maybe lighten that a little bit more, but I think we'll be all right. We want it to distinguish itself a little bit. I'm going to duplicate this layer. 
going to select it by control and clicking on the picture. I'm going to take my brush and make it completely black. I'm going to just paint these in. What are you doing? I'm going to get some shadow to go with these. Deselect that. Now, I'm going to close in just a little again. I want my brush to be just a hair bigger than the actual circle. So that should do nicely. Now I have these as a guide. I'm just going to use my hard brush a little bit bigger to black all the way around this again. Just so I can kind of see what I'm doing. You could have just done this to begin with. For me it helps me uh, be a little random still have a good look as far as the shadow is concerned. Now if we pull this down, kind of got this going on. I am going to blur that. That's not too bad. So this is kind of an inset blur all the way around. Like when these were put in, they, uh, they indented the metal a little bit. So, I'm going to uh, copy this again. And this time, I'm going to move it down a few pixels. Three, maybe four. And right a few pixels. One, two, three, four. Now, this is a pretty darn strong shadow. So, I'm going to hit Control E. And then I'm going to lower the opacity a little. Not much. 92. That works for me. I may even go back in. Add a little more blur. I like that. And there we go. We can save this out as a JPEG or a Targa or whatever you're using with your game, game engine. Graeme engine. There's a new thing. And at a distance, you'll have a pretty nice looking box. You can put in a text layer and put some text across it. Do not open, fragile, whatever. Uh, you could use your transform tool to turn it at a little bit of an angle. Um, if you do put in text, I would recommend that you go back in with an eraser brush and something pretty scratchy like this and very lightly take some of that out just so it looks like it's worn on the paint but there you go for that matter I mean this is pretty clean texture you could just print it on there and call it a go alright that covers making a box quick I will see you guys in the next video.